When thinking about how the camera works, it is always fascinating, isn't it? That with just a single click, you get to have your own two-dimensional version that you can easily develop onto your paper or anywhere else. But going back to the history of this amazing gadget, what immediately comes out is the term Obscura. In this video, we will try to give you a history of the camera, the Camera Obscura. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. First, let's go to the etymology. Obscura is a Latin term for secret, undistinguished, unknown, or dark. Camera, on the other hand, means chamber. When put together, camera obscura means a dark chamber. This is the mechanism of the oldest version of photography. Where there are dark rooms that have a very tiny hole where light can pass through. Through this light that passes through the hole, the image of that subject behind the wall is projected into the opposite wall. That is the concept of the earliest and most basic form of the camera obscura. The usage of a camera obscura dates as early as the time of Aristotle or in the 4th century BC. On a documented and written record, it was believed that a theorist in China named Mo Tzu observed that when an object is lit up, be it by the sun or a torch, the same light that shines upon that object when it passes into a small hole to a dark room will create the same image. However, with an inverted version, it is also around this era when the Greek philosopher Aristotle was able to realize that such a phenomenon will allow him to observe eclipses well. Since, at the time, they already knew the damage that may be caused by looking directly into the sky during an eclipse, he wanted to find a way to observe them nonetheless. He was able to note that when there is an eclipse, if he stays below a tree, he can view it well when the light passes through the holes in between the branches and the leaves. In this way, he can see what's happening above even without having to look at what really is happening up there. It's amazing how he was able to note that what is projected using the holes in the leaves is actually the shape of the sun during the eclipse. With these observations, a lot of experiments were then formed to test out these theories and to apply its context into an invention. The experiments revolved around light and a small hole. As a source, they used the sun, fire using torches, and other sources of light. However, there was still a failure to make use of these theories and combinations because none of them were able to figure out the use of a surface where the image can be projected. There was this lacking factor until Al Hazen, who was a brilliant scientist in the 11th century, was able to invent the first ever camera obscura as well as the pinhole camera. His most famous work is the theory of light. In the old times, it was believed that the human eye is the source of light. However, he was the one who was able to observe that the eye is not a light source. Based on the observation that the sun affects the eyes, and yet the eye does not affect the light. Stemming from this theory, 400 years later, Leonardo da Vinci drafted this theory that the eye is like a camera obscura. To this date, such comparison is still often cited in many science references because the hole in the dark chamber is the eye's pupil, while the surface where the image shall be reflected is the retina. Branching out from this neat comparison of the eye versus the camera, years later, the camera obscura is improved by adding a lens in the area where the light enters the pinhole which makes sense because the eye is also made of a convex lens. This lens allows the eye to focus on objects that can be clearly reflected in the retina. Years later, in 1604, the term camera obscura was first used. At this time, because of the wide studies on light, 
as well as the camera in its comparison with the human eye, developments and inventions were made more often than before when you'd have to wait for hundreds of centuries for new discoveries. It was Johannes Kepler who first used the term. He also used the camera for observing astronomy. He also created a version that he can easily bring anywhere he went to study more about stars and astronomy. During the 1800s, camera obscuras became a popular attraction, so they created a larger version so that groups of people can experience and use it together. There is even a tourist attraction in Edinburgh which gives the people a chance to observe the different happenings in a camera obscuro through the observatory. We've definitely gotten a long way when it comes to imaging. From the first camera obscura, to the first photograph, to the first mass photography, to SLRs and digicams, instant Polaroid cameras, and even the current camera phones. Up until now, there are still a lot of camera obscuras all around the world and are even placed in famous destinations for you to enjoy. After all, it is a history of the camera. Knowing how the camera obscura came about, and especially how it works, will help you appreciate the gadget you currently hold with you. You get to be more amazed by each click and shot you take of your subject. Now, you get the highest form of imaging technology in your hands. A good set of options for cameras and a wide array of amazing lenses. So you get to be mesmerized by the fact that all it took way, way back is a dark chamber and a small hole. Hope you had fun and learned a lot from this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, if you wish to see videos of this kind, you may subscribe and visit our channel. Please hit the notification bell to know first every time we have a new video. See you in the next one!